ok. So, now what I am uh, writing here is the temperature gradient of the gas at the wall, so at the near the wall ok, you have to calculate it at the wall is evaluated with an approximation only because we do not know the exact profile of the temperature curve. So, that we can assume that uh, like uh, calculate it correctly ok, because the numerically we are not solving this. So, the minimum value is evaluated as this T f minus T w divided by d by 2. So, as I have explained in this previous slide, this will be the temperature profile here and uh, uh, T f minus T w divided by d by 2 will be the gradient which is the minimum value, but since it is a non-linear variation, the gradient at the wall is expected to be different. So, that will be higher. So, understanding that d d by dx will be much greater than uh, d by 2, so this is greater than d by 2, ok, here uh, we can say d by 2 we can replace by d by d, where b is greater than 2. So, we write T f minus T w divided by d by b, so that b is greater than 2, so that this d t by d x will be greater than what we get from this value, approximate value, ok. So, that is what the b I am introducing another variable which is greater than 2, so that I get the gradient properly and some again we need some uh, validation for this, we have some take some measurement or something like that and uh, validate this. So, understand we have to understand that b will be much much greater than 2 say 3, 4 something like that ok. Now, area of conduction is 2 into del into L where L is the length in the direction perpendicular to the paper or perpendicular to the screen for example ok. So, 2 times that will be the area of conduction the factor 2 comes because of 2 walls are present ok. So, the area of cross section is del into length perpendicular to the, um, the paper or the uh, screen. So, that will be the uh, area one side both sides 2 times del L ok. Now, substituting this uh, you can see reaction rate delta H C volume, volume is del L into D correct, volume of that uh, where the heat is generated uh, the, the gas is just, just burnt. So, now right hand side. So, now please the negative sign disappears because we have taken the absolute value of the gradient here. So, negative signs uh, will not be there here, negative sign will not be there. So, this is the thermal connectivity, area of cross section and this the gradient where we have put d by b now, b is greater than 2 ok. So, now the expression for d which allows the flame to propagate just group D in one side. So, D square equal to uh, 2 times thermal connectivity into B value divided by the heat which is released per unit volume, this is heat released per unit volume into T f minus T w. So, to eliminate the heat of reaction we can put the SL or delta ok. Similarly, uh, this can be replaced by 1 plus S into C p into delta T. So, when you do that ok, same procedure. Now, one more assumption what I make is T w wall temperature is T u, it is maintained at the unburnt uh, say ambient temperature, unburnt reactant temperature is uh, equal to ambient temperature. So, that is the value here. So, then uh, uh, so we can say the uh, reaction rate and SL can be used to eliminate the reaction rate and delta H c can be eliminated by putting 1 plus S into C p into T f minus T u. Now, T wall and T u are going to be cancelled. So, we get D as B power 0 0.5 times del. So, D the distance which can cause quenching if it is less than this value that is the quenching distance ok or if it is greater than if the dimension is greater than D then it will allow the flame to propagate. So, that will be some value B power 0 0.5 this B we have already told it is much much greater than 2 but we do not exactly know the value into del which is flame thickness. So, that means, d is proportional to flame thickness, d is root of b times flame thickness and this root of b is much much greater than 2. So, we, we saw the same thing previously for the R c. When I say R c the critical volume, uh, critical radius of ignition 
of the spherical mixture, spherical volume of mixture, we saw that this was root 6 by 2 times del. Okay? So, this is a few times, we, we told that Rc is few times more than del. Now, we are saying the quenching distance d is more like a much more than a few times, okay? many times greater than del because b is much greater than 2. Okay? So, that is the thing. So, there is a relationship between this. So, quenching distance will be much larger than the, the dimension required for the ignition. So, some quenching distance values are given here. For methane it is 2.5, ethane 2.2. So, you can see the order of millimeters for all this. But for hydrogen, quenching distance is 0.6. So, we are considering a stoichiometric mixture phi equal to 1 and I can see the quenching distance is very low 0.64 millimeters for hydrogen. Okay? So, that is the important thing because the flame speed is very high for that. So, when the flame uh, speed actually uh, is very high here, but here you can see as it is in, even though flame is flame speed is higher, you can see that the quenching distance is not so high because of the other factors basically coming into play. So, the alpha etc. Okay? So, the alpha, the Lewis number that is very important uh, consideration alpha bt. So, this is very important uh, thing. So, you can see that why, why we are interested in d because when you want to do uh, design of two things, one is called flame arrestor. If you do not want the flame to propagate through a particular uh, region from uh, where it is formed, it does not propagate to another uh, uh, space, then you put a flame arrestor which is a bung, okay, bank of these tubes of diameters less than uh, d. When you do that, then the flame cannot travel because it will lose the heat what it generates, so it, it will quench. So, to quenching distance d is very important in two things. One, one is to uh, design the flame arrestors. Another one is in some cases we will have a pilot uh, tube which we can open it and close it whenever we want. This pilot tube can allow some mixture to propagate into it and the flame also will propagate along with the mixture igniting another source which is present elsewhere. So, that is pilot ignition, uh, it is called pilot tube. Okay? So, uh, two applications are there for this, but anyway this is very important uh, things, property for this uh, which we have to understand. So, uh, in the ignition part, yeah, there is a critical dimension called Rc which will allow us to uh, ignite with using external source with a minimum ignition energy, at least some value of uh, ignition energy. And uh, uh, in this case, quenching distance which is much much larger than the flame uh, thickness that will be uh, important for designing the uh, flame arrestors and uh, pilot uh, tubes. Okay, now, the last topic what we are going to cover here is called flame stability. Okay, so, in this case you can see that uh, I have put a Bunsen burner's uh, uh, flame photograph here and you can see that the, the burner exit is here, burner exit is here. And uh, you can see the flame is at, is almost attached to the burner rim. So, if you see the top portion, the burner rim will look like something like this, top view and uh, this is called burner rim. And uh, in the front view, you can see that the burner rim is uh, highlighted here and the flame is slightly away from this burner rim. It will not touch the rim because it will lose its heat and radicals to the walls. So, it will say a few mm, 1 mm or 1.5 mm away from this it will anchor. So, this is called flame anchoring. Okay? Flame anchors in, the, in this rim some uh, yeah, few millimeters, say 1, 1.5 millimeter away from that and it will amp anchor there. And uh, when you steadily, steadily supply the reactants and the flame does not change its shape, then we can say a steady flame or a stable flame is established. Okay? So, this is the important uh, criteria here. Okay? In the Bunsen burner, what we do is we supply reactants and a flame is formed, correct? A flame is formed and uh, this flame basically anchors a few mm away from the rim which is shown here, top view and uh, if your reactants are fed at a steady state and uh, then the flame which is seen does not change its shape, 
or uh, oxidate or anything then we can say a stable flame is established. So now the reactant flow rate say I will say volumetric flow rate of the reactants if you increase okay increase a slightly increase so that is a small range of this volumetric flow rate of reactants a small range okay where we can establish stable flames if you cross these limits or the range so go lower than the lower limit of this or higher than the higher limit of this then we will see two types of instabilities okay in the premix flames in the premix flames we will see two types of instabilities one is called lift off that means volumetric flow rate there is a small range only a small range of volumetric flow rate we taught reactants for the reactants is there this volumetric flow rate will allow us to establish a stable flame in a small range of this flow rate when you increase the flow rate beyond the value of maximum value of this range then the flame will not be able to sit here very near to the rim as we have seen in the stable flame case and it lifts off from the rim burner rim so that is one of the instability which we will see called lift off and when you increase the velocity or the volumetric flow rate further then the flame will blow off that is the flame extinguish this is convective extinction because you are increasing the convection here and uh, what happens is here basically when you say v dot r v dot r divided by the area of cross section of the burner okay this is the say diameter area of cross section is pi d square by 4 okay now this area of cross section if you divide this you get the unburnt mixture velocity u okay average velocity so this velocity under the for the flame that is a laminar flame speed this locally the unburnt gas velocity u and the laminar flame speed sl should match now when you increase vr you are increasing u but sl is not going to change because sl depends only on alpha and reaction rate reaction rate depends on phi and we are not going to change anything else only the velocity is changed now so what happens is the u is going to be higher than sl so the flame will not anchor at the same position it will lift off on the other hand when uh, vr the volumetric flow rate is decreased be, uh, in the range we, where we have a stable flame if the vr is re reduced below the minimum value of the range then we encounter what is called flashback this flashback basically is the phenomenon where the see in this tube the reactants are supplied okay when you when you decrease this vr the flame will try to propagate down the tube itself provided the diameter of this tube is greater than the quenching distance d correct or else it do not allow the flame to propagate do you understand now so when uh, the vr is reduced to a value so that u decreases when u decreases well below the sl value okay then what happens the flame will propagate down because it is it is not going to wait for the reactants to reach it it will try to come down consuming the reactants when it does that this pro process is called flashback it is flashing backwards instead of staying at the burner rim it is or the exit of the burner it is trying to flash back down okay the criteria is u should be less than sl locally plus the diameter of the tube should be greater than the quenching distance these are the two important instabilities which we encounter in the premix reactants now a stable flame as i told here uh, anchors or sustains a few millimeter away from the burner rim as i told you because if it is very close to the burner rim it will lose its heat to the wall and also it will lose radicals to the wall so that it may not uh, uh, establish itself there okay now for a given fuel type then the equivalence ratio unburnt gas temperature and pressure okay stable flames can be uh, obtained but the flow rate of uh, the reactants that is v dot r is in a narrow range a very small range of flow rates you can accomplish this stable flames 
but after that we cannot do. So for a given burner diameter, basically, uh, for uh, other things are fixed, fuel type is fixed, equal ratio is fixed, unburned temperature is fixed, etc. Then only in a certain range of flow, we can uh, flow rates, we can establish stable flames, which will be, which will not change its shape or anything uh, for the given steady flow of the reactant. Okay, now keeping other parameters as constant, as I told you, other parameters keep is constant, but the reactant flow rate is a, which is associated with the u value or its velocity u, okay, is increased. At a critical value, the flame is seen to lift off from the burner rim, as I explained to you now, because of the u, the unburned reactant velocity is uh, higher than the flame speed now. So, it is trying to push the flame away, okay. So, and the flame will go away from the burner rim and anchor at a some distance where there is a match of the local unburned velocity u and the flame speed s l. At a higher velocity, the flame will blow off because it cannot have any match anywhere and also atmospheric interference will be higher, so the flame will blow off. On the other hand, the reverse of that, the reactant velocity is decreased below a critical value and the burner diameter, the two conditions, burner diameter is larger than the quenching distance, so d should be greater than small d, which we just now saw, so quenching distance, then the flame can flash back into the burner. So, these are the two instabilities, which is primarily due to the values of uh, u, the unburned, average unburned reactant velocity and the laminar flame speed for the given condition. Okay. Now, flashback is dangerous because it is not only an instability, what happens is a safety hazard. So, for example, normally what I do is I take a uh, chamber, mixing chamber like this. So, I supply fuel and supply oxygen, oxidizer in this and there will be a, a burner, this is burner tube and this is the mixing, this is the mixing chamber, mixing chamber, okay. So now, okay, now when they are mixed here, they are thoroughly mixed here, the reactants are thoroughly mixed here and they are supplied into this. Okay, now if a flame comes down, it will see a large volume of the reactants in the mixing chamber and instantly to ignite it. The flame coming down will ignite it. So, it is a safety problem. Propagation of a flame through a port or a burner may ignite a large volume of the gas in the mixing chamber that supplies the premixed reactant to the port. So, unless if you do not provide any flame arrest, that is what we call flame arrester. If you put a bank of tube where the diameter of the each tube is less than the quenching distance, the flame cannot propagate beyond that value or you increase the heat loss, correct. So, what you do is there is a port or the burner rim, now you put some bank of tubes here, bank of tubes. This bank of tubes will have diameters less than the quenching distance. This diameter d, d may be greater than the quenching distance, but the diameter of each tube here, okay, say, say d tube will be lesser, much lesser than d. So, it will not allow the flame to propagate or we have to actually cool this. So, supply water and cool this. So, so, this portion is cooled now, so flame coming to this point will lose more heat and it will quench. So, either you have to put some cooling device or you have to put some bank of tubes to arrest the flame propagating down this. So, it is a safety hazard basically, okay, the flashback. But in any burner or combustion chamber where you have burners, this type of instability can happen. So, we have to anyway go for the flame arrester, this is the flame arrester. or cooling, cooling of the burner uh, tube, so that it will uh, not allow the flame to propagate down, okay. So, if you do not provide any of this and the flashback occurs, then it may ignite the large volume of uh, premixed reactant in the mixing chamber, 
that may cause a rapid combustion and explosion. Okay, as I told you, this is one of the applications, this flame arrester for calculating quenching distance, I told that flame arrester can be designed using that. Another one is, uh, one is the flash tube. Flash tube is a device where you, you allow the premix reactant to flow through this and the flame can propagate through this um, into the burner port to cause ignition. In a big uh, say domestic uh, cooking uh, thing etc, ignition can be uh, achieved by igniting a small flash tube which will ignite that and uh, the flame will propagate and ignite the real, <coughs> real uh, combustor. Okay? So, the flashback is a dangerous uh, instability. Lift off is also a, uh, an instability, but it is not dangerous because it is going to only quench the flame, but it is undesirable. Why? Because once flame, you, you do not notice the lift off and uh, eventually it blows off, then unburned gas will leave to the atmosphere. So, or it can also cause incomplete combustion in some several scenarios. The lifted flame cannot burn properly. Okay. Now, you cannot sustain ignition when the flame is lifted. When the flame is uh, anchored very close to the burner rim, the subsequent preheating of the reactants and uh, continuous combustion can be easier. However, if the flame is lifted off, see if flame is now standing away, this comes in and it can diffuse away, the reactants can diffuse away, may not be properly preheated. So, to sustain an ignition itself is a challenge in a lifted flame. So, lifted flame will contribute to blow off and it can contribute to incomplete combustion, escape of unburnt reactant gases, reactant gas. Then uh, it can also provide difficulty in igniting, igniting the incoming mixture. Okay? Flame control is very hard. When you want to operate in lifted flame, it is very hard to control that. And uh, lifted flames are noisy. It will produce that uh, uh, some um, uh, buffing sound. It is noisy. So, these are the instability problems and we need to avoid instability. So, normally when you design a burner, the burner has to be tested for the range of flow uh, rates uh, in which it can be operated in a stable manner. Okay? But as I told you, these lift off or flashback both are due to mismatch of local laminar flame speed with the unburnt velocity. So, U and SL mismatch in local values will cause this. Okay, let us try to explain this more. So, you can see this is the premix flame. As I told you, some I um, uh, exaggerated this, some uh, millimeters is away. So, this is the uh, distance, say I will say dp, where the some gap is produced, then after that the flame uh, anchors. Okay. So, now uh, when you take the flame surface, perpendicular to the surface you get the value of SL. Uh, the flame will propagate in the perpendicular direction of it. So, the value of the flame speed is perpendicular to this. When you draw this unburnt reactant is coming in through this and uh, it changes the direction and goes almost perpendicular to the flame and goes out. So, this has a component U. Okay. So, this has a velocity U here. So, based upon the local value of u, at any point if you take, based upon local value u and the SL, which is higher, it should be almost the same. But in the major area, it should be almost the same. If it is not same, then this type of instability will occur. If u is less than, much less than SL, flashback occurs. If u is more than SL, lift off occurs and so on. Okay? So, to, to analyze this, Okay, what we try to do is we concentrate our uh, uh, focus on a very uh, small area very near to the burner rim. So, this is the burner rim, burner rim, very near to the burner rim let us focus our attention and uh, draw some scenarios. Okay, now, for a given mixture the laminar flame speed, see please understand one more thing is this is the flame, this, this is flame. The laminar flame speed is not constant. Okay, so, let us take this, okay. This is the flame, this is the rim, this is the rim, and this is the flame. Okay. So now laminar flame speed in this here it will be low. Here, because of the heat loss to the walls, radical losses to the walls, the laminar flame speed will be low here. 
ok. Now, it increases basically. So, then it increases to a constant value. It is remains constant for some time. Then it again decreases towards this top it decreases again. So, it is not uniform the SL value along the flame is not uniform it actually so this is the profile of SL. So, this is the profile of SL. So, near the wall it is very low and it increases and becomes almost constant for some time then it goes and decreases. Please understand I am focusing my attention only a small distance from the rim. This is what I am drawing here. So, within a small distance you can see there is a increase in the SL and remains constant. So, that is the profile of SL. When I plot the SL as a function of the distance from the rim towards the center of the burner then it increases it increases slowly and uh, sharply and uh, remains constant ok and con it continues for some time then it again decreases towards the other wall ok. So, now this is the profile of this is the profile of SL. So, this profile of SL is drawn here. So, for a given reactant this will be the profile of SL, but now let us try to perturb perturb the scenario. So, for example, if the value of u, u how it varies in a pipe, in a pipe for example, circular circular pipe say diameter d, d is the diameter. So, now you know that the fully developed flow you will get a parabolic profile like this. So, this will be the profile of the u, profile of u that is how u varies along the uh, radius or the diameter ok. So, this is the in this radius. So, now when you go to near to the rim like this I can approximate this parabolic profile this is a parabolic profile. So, this profile is parabolic. When I go near to the wall ok very near to the wall this parabolic profile can be taken as a linear profile. So, that is what this line represents. So, this is the profile of u very near to the wall or rim the burner rim ok. It uh, goes to 0 value at the wall and it increases it as a parabola it increases reaches the maximum value at the center and again decreases. So, this is the way. So, near to the burner rim we can say linear variation we can assume correct. Now, first scenario is flashback why obviously, SL locally if you take any point in this any line if you draw SL is predominantly higher than U. So, see why I am only concentrating on this portion near to the rim because there are only the flame anchors correct this is a flame anchoring point basically. So, I have to focus only my attention near to the flame anchoring point and see whether the flame will anchor or not. So, just slightly away from this you can see that is a large difference between U and SL. So, that the flame will try to come down only it will not be able to anchor above the burner. So, flashback will occur. If this is a stable case you can see that locally here the SL may be slightly less than uh, in this case SL be SL is slightly less than this uh, um, U, but here you can see that uh, like a SL is actually higher than this. Then after this point again you can see this SL is lower than this. So, predominantly you will see there is a match between the SL and U. So, this will produce a stable flame. On the other hand in this case the third case U is always higher. So, it, it will not allow the flame to anchor in, the, in this position the flame is lifted off. So, this is the lift off uh, thing. So, it is only a local mismatch between the U value and SL value which will allow the flame to be stable or it will flash back or it will lift off ok. So, if U is smaller than SL predominantly please understand it is only a small area where it should be ok then flashback occurs 
if u and sl are comparable like this comparable then almost at, at most of the points then the flame anchors at a stable equilibrium point so i am interested only in the anchoring region please understand okay so in the center portion it's fine that's not a problem so that is the way since the profile is the velocity here at the center of this uh, uh, tube the flame is actually taking the conical shape because of that if the velocity is almost uniform basically then you get a flat flame okay we already seen that so since this uh, profile is uh, non uniform for the u the flame also behaves like this okay then if u and sl are, uh, are comparable then at, uh, mainly at all the points or almost all, all the points then a yeah, flame is stable now it anchors at a stable position so that stable position is also called equilibrium point okay then if u is larger than sl in the third case then flame lifts off because the local mismatch is heavy there okay so these are the way the, this is the important thing we should understand that the stability of the premix flame is due to mismatch between the uh, u and sl 